So we are moving sweet potatoes and ginger out to the greenhouse today. When you're moving anything from a normal indoor climate out to your hotbed greenhouse, you have to keep it covered and very well protected on the way. It is freezing outside, very freezing. And so anything that goes out needs to be put in a Rubbermaid with a lid on so that it buffers the airspace around the plant while you're running to the greenhouse. Hey guys, I'm just gonna take a little shot quickly to show myself uncovering the frost sensitive plants you can see over here. I've got plenty of cold season plants that don't care about the frost. This side is my herb side and it has tomatoes and celery and basil and that kind of thing. Alright, so I like to keep milk jugs on top of really frost sensitive things like tomatoes even though I also have a cloth even though they're inside a greenhouse, even though they're on a hotbed. This time of year we have freezing temperatures night and day and so multiple protections. What I need to do now is I need to start harvesting intensively so that I can make room for these other plants that are going to be getting bigger and needing more space. I need to come out and cut the celery, it'll come back again and I need to get it dried and put into the freezer. If you have purchased and downloaded my ebook about how I built this little greenhouse, you'll know that this is an 18 inch walkway. And I can't walk down it straight away. I have to walk down it sideways because it's quite slim. The way to fix that is to put in T-posts on the outside edges to anchor the cow panel. And then I could have raised up the cow panels more and I could have opened the pathway up a little bit. All right, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you harvest rhubarb, you want to harvest it by pulling, not breaking. And this indicates to the plant to grow more. And this is the second time I've harvested from this plant this year. All right, so you can see what the end looks like if you pull. Now we're gonna make our second batch of jam for the year. It is April. I made my first batch about a week ago. So Kaya, yep. I'm gonna hand this to you through the door. Paige's gonna have to make more of that flatbread. Yeah, okay, that There's can go one in more on piece. the kitchen. There's one more piece. That can go in on the kitchen table. All right, so when you have a hotbed and you're intensively planting, you need to make sure that you're intensively harvesting. Otherwise, things are gonna to go to seed, things are going to get uh, brittle or bitter. You wanna make sure that you're harvesting things. This is the stuff that we're uh, cut, uh, pulling and giving to rabbits and giving to ourselves. And this that looks like grass is wheat. This is the wheat that I was feeding to the rabbits and it can also be fed to uh, the rabbits in its plant form. A new hotbed is very different from an old hotbed. This hotbed here is years old. It's like 2018 or 2019. And um, when you have one that's that old, it doesn't produce a whole lot of heat. It produces only a barely a tiny amount of heat. And so, I needed to put cold stuff in there, cold tolerating things. And the first time I planted this, it didn't heat up. So I couldn't plant in January. I had to wait until I'd worked a little harder and the days got a little bit longer before anything grew here in February. If it had been a new hotbed, it would have heated up and we could have planted whatever we wanted to in here and it would have been fine. Here, go give this to a mama rabbit.
Here's our tot soy. There's cola plant. Makes your homemade pop taste like uh, Pepsi. There's some walking onions. Those I didn't plant this year. Those came back from last year. I have some carrots in here. Uh, lettuce. Onions. This was a tomato I planted in here, and you see it did not do well. The, the bed itself was not hot enough. See? There at the root, it's a little bit alive still, but not much. Same thing for this one. It's a little bit alive at the root, but not much. So, I'm going to pull those out. I'm not going to put anything warm loving in this bed. It just, it's full of compost. It's not full of heat producing carbon and manure. And you can see there's a difference between those that were planted and don't have enough room. They're too close together to really fill out. And one that has lots of space. That's how a tot soy is supposed to look. But it doesn't matter. We harvest, we eat it, there's a little more room, they grow a little bigger. All right, on this side, I have a lettuce that needs to be pulled, I have dill, we have some sorrel, Bad lots, sorrel. huh? Bad sorrel. Bad sorrel. Um, I have basil here, I have beets, more cutting celery. Okay. So that's parsley, and I want to keep parsley. I want to keep parsley separate from celery. The parsley has a much thinner stem, and it tastes like parsley. And they're not going to taste equally good in soup. So again, I need to make sure to keep them separate from each other. I want to show you what it looks like now that I've come in and ruthlessly, I've left a couple of them. There's one right there. So I had COVID a couple times and my, my sense of smell is not very good. And, um, a lot of what you taste comes from your smell. And so I can't tell the difference between parsley and celery. And this greenhouse has been closed up for almost two weeks because of our cold, snowy, freezing weather. I have left the cover over the top and the door closed. And I watered two days ago when we were in the 50s. I was finally able to water again and that was important, but they went a week and a half without water and they were fine because they weren't trying to grow fast and it wasn't hot in here because the weather outside was so cold. I come in and pull a lot of this for the rabbits because the more I pull, the more space there is for the others to get big. So there's a constant source of food here for the rabbits and they love it. Um, so yeah, I have my plans for this on Etsy. I made it for less than $100. It's full of yard waste and cardboard and paper and um, wood that's breaking down. These ones are not as hot as a new hotbed, but they still were in April and we still have majorly freezing weather and yet we've got potatoes and everything else growing. And we harvest hardcore. We are hardcore harvesters. When you plant this compactly, you have got to harvest every day. <laughs> oh, and they found it too. Yeah. Greens, yummy. All right, this gray mom, she is making up a nest box. Now, greens cannot replace hay if you want a fast growing, healthy rabbit. They have to have the hay too. They have to have high protein. That's like three of them, but they're super big and pretty. Okay, only one leaf for the new buck. Okay. And you can give the other to our older buck, because he's more used to it. How about this? I can give her... Um, she, yeah, she could just have that whole bunch. Yeah, except for one leaf. Hey, babies. Exciting. Very exciting. Thank you for dinner, by the way. Mm -hmm.